Michael Archer left Virginia behind to become an international superstar. Under the stage name D'Angelo, he was crowned one of the most talented musicians in the late 90s and early 2000s. After snatching up a few Grammy Awards, he disappeared from the limelight, taking his amazing talent with him. So what happened? Here's the truth about D'Angelo's life and why he really faded away. D'Angelo grew up in the Pentecostal church in Richmond, Virginia. His brother Luther came home from school one day and found three-year-old D'Angelo playing a Prince song on the piano. According to a GQ article, D'Angelo was five years old when his parents split up, and since his mom was struggling, he and his brothers lived with his father, who was a preacher. When he turned to nine, his dad began, quote, battling his own demons. So D'Angelo and his siblings packed up and moved back in with their mom. He played music in his father's church up until he turned 12, and he started playing in his grandfather's church as well. When he became a teenager, he formed different music groups, including Michael Archer and Precise, which had success on the amateur night competition at the Apollo Theater. The 90s signaled the start of the golden era of rap music. D'Angelo became affiliated with a hip-hop group called IDU, and he dropped out of high school to focus on his music career. In 1992, IDU had a meeting with record executives, but the big wigs weren't interested in the entire group. They were more amazed by D'Angelo's background vocals. According to Greensboro.com, he signed with a publishing company that eventually became Midnight Music and later got a record deal from the now defunct EMI. His first major success came in 1994 when he co-wrote and co-produced You Will Know for the supergroup Black Men United. That single helped create the buzz for his iconic studio album, Brown Sugar. Brown Sugar sold 300,000 copies within the first few months of its release. He went on tour for two years to promote the album, and in the end, he said he was left with writer's block. For the next few years, he took a break from writing and released cover versions and remakes of songs to keep his fans satisfied. During that same time, he and his girlfriend, singer Angie Stone, who was 13 years older than him, had a son together named Michael Jr. D'Angelo told GQ it was the birth of his son that partially compelled him to record his follow-up album. In 2000, he finally released Voodoo. The album was called a masterpiece by music critics as it landed at the number one spot on the Billboard charts. It sold more than a million units in five weeks, and D'Angelo won two Grammy Awards for all his hard work. The video for Untitled, How Does It Feel? completely changed the game for the entire music video industry. Set against a black background and shot from the hips up, D'Angelo's glistening muscles will be ingrained in our minds forever. The success of his follow-up album came at a cost. At the start of the Voodoo tour, he began to crack. His tour's band leader, Questlove, told GQ that fans were screaming, take it off, every time D'Angelo appeared on stage and the singer began to panic. He was worried he wouldn't look as chiseled and in shape as he did in the How Does It Feel music video. Questlove said D'Angelo would become so frustrated that his fans were treating him like a piece of meat. One time, a fan threw money at him on stage and he threw it right back at her in a rage. Questlove said sometimes they would have to beg him not to cancel shows altogether. On the last day of the tour, D'Angelo told Questlove, I cannot wait until this tour is over. I'm going to go in the woods, drink some hooch, grow a beard, and get fat. Questlove thought he was playing around, but he wasn't. When the tour ended, D'Angelo attempted to go back to his normal life, but that wasn't possible with the fame he had acquired. By that time, his relationship with Angie was over. She told Essence that she began dating him when he was just 19. He was short, wore glasses, and had low self-esteem. She helped build up his confidence and told him that one day people would fall in love with his beautiful lips after garnering attention in the public eye, suddenly everyone began telling D'Angelo he was too good-looking to be with her. She told Essence magazine that he fathered a daughter with another woman, and he rarely made time to see the son he shared with Angie. Angie said D'Angelo was too focused on his life and trying to get his career back on track. And the singer confirmed to GQ that after his voodoo tour, everything fell apart. He lost a few people who were close to him, including his uncle Cece and his beloved grandmother. He was still working in the studio, but he also began partying and dabbling in substances. In 2005, singer John Mayer wrote an open letter in Esquire magazine begging D'Angelo to release a new album. But the singer had other things on his agenda. 
That same year, he was pulled over in Richmond and was charged with disturbing the peace, driving under the influence, driving without a license, and possession of substances. But no one was more surprised than his manager, Dominique Trenier. Dominique borrowed a tour bus, drove out from California to Richmond, picked up D'Angelo and drove him back to a California recovery center. But treatment didn't help. He said the moment he left, he went straight to the liquor store. Months later, he was driving his Hummer on a suspended license when his vehicle crossed the roadway and struck a fence. D'Angelo, who wasn't wearing a seatbelt, was ejected from the car. Another person in the vehicle, a woman named Lynn Sellers, was also injured. Following the accident, he released a statement to the Associated Press saying he banged up his ribs but was fine and was excited to return to the studio. Many believed the accident would be his wake-up call, but it wasn't until Jay Dilla passed away in February 2006 at the age of 32 from cardiac arrest that D'Angelo decided it was time to get help. He wanted to check into Eric Clapton's Crossroads Treatment Center in Antigua, but it would cost him $40,000, which he didn't have. So his good friend and A&R executive at EMI Music, Gary Harris, contacted celebrity personal manager Irving Azoff. Irving didn't know D'Angelo at all, but he knew of his music, so he agreed to cut a check to help him out. Once he made it to the rehab center, he remained there for an entire month. He signed a deal with Jay Records in 2007, but there was more trouble happening in his private life. On March 6, 2010, he was locked up after he offered an NYPD undercover police officer $40 for her services. His time away from the spotlight wasn't all bad though. He fathered a third child and he reportedly mastered the guitar by practicing the instrument for six hours a day. After his weight reached 300 pounds, he started a diet of fish and green apples and headed back to the gym to trim his five foot seven frame. After management changes, record company changes, and a bunch of personal issues, he released Black Messiah in 2014 and took home two Grammy Awards. In June 2015, he told Rolling Stone that he was working on more material for a new album, calling it a companion piece to Black Messiah. In 2018, he announced a European tour, and we can only hope that the wait won't be long before he blesses us with new music again.